Hello, and welcome to One Spooks Professor, where today we're going to be discussing holiday horror. Now, a lot of holiday horror works are pretty bad. I'm, I'm thinking of that movie, Thanks Killing, with that crazy killer turkey that becomes a, a nuclear mutant and has all these terrible lines. It's a, it's a mess. But there are also some solid entries in horror franchises that are holiday themed and are quite memorable in a good way in a good way uh, thanks killing is definitely memorable just uh not really as a good movie no indeed one of the most famous horror franchises of all time is often not recognized as a holiday movie despite it being in the very title halloween it's a holiday horror movie it's a horror movie it happens on a holiday and it tends to always happen on that day and this isn't confined to even just horror movies or horror works in general. A Christmas Carol is a mixture of a traditional holiday tale and a ghost story. In Victorian England, there was actually a long tradition of winter solstice ghost stories that people would tell. So those long, dark winter nights in England? Perfect time for some creepy tales. No, Christmas Carol is not by and large considered a horror work by most modern audiences, but it has a great deal of horror elements and fits within some of the established traditions of ghost stories and what we now recognize as the standard holiday story of learning Christmas cheer. Some of the movies and plays that have followed based on the work have upped or downplayed the creep factor based on their intended audience. There are also a lot of winter and snow-themed horror stories out there that you could argue are holiday-ish, but really any holiday will do. If there's a horror story that takes place on, say, Independence Day and some killer's going around shoving fireworks in people and setting them off and saying, God bless America, well, I guess that might qualify. Actually, I'd, I'd go see that movie. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. How did he die? Well... Someone stabbed him with an American flag 15 times. He's hunting down everyone who's descendant of a British loyalist in America. That's a lot of people. I guess he has access to the DNA database. You know what? Let's make this happen. I, I think this could be a thing. Okay, that would probably be absolutely terrible. But you see how it works. Holidays and horror can be mixed, and often to considerable success, at least if you count money or notoriety as success. Hey, sometimes it's infamy, but... I mean, at least you stand out. So let's talk holidays and how they tend to mix with horror, or can mix with horror. The holiday horror work is often a financial proposition in its construction, because there is often a demand for holiday-themed works once a year. Well, once a year for each holiday. That's a lot of chances to make some money. Hey, when Christmas comes out, You've got all the Christmas movies that are on TV. Thanksgiving's rolling? Well, let's put on the Thanksgiving movies. It's Halloween? Well, it's scary everything, so most horror movies can make out like bandits on Halloween, but specifically the Halloween-themed ones tend to do better. There's a guaranteed market every year. Well, not guaranteed, but at least a relatively stable market. So if you want to take advantage of a potential ready audience or TV contracts or something else, there is a reasonable chance, a very reasonable chance, I would say, of finding some success. There are entire markets devoted to this, or channels who specialize in this. I mean, you bring up Hallmark and Lifetime movies, and there's a whole slew of Christmas specials that they come out with every year. And it's almost like they start showing them earlier and earlier because they have such a backlog. There is success to be had here, even on just television. Also, the Hollywood box office has been a big deal in the United States for a while, and I imagine elsewhere in the world. And what says, come see our movie on a holiday better than a Hollywood movie, please pay us your money. Thank you very much. Now you may go watch Turkey vs. Santa, Thanksgiving vs. Christmas 23. Because why not? Not only are a lot of people off during the holidays assume that you're not working one of those places that gets hit hard by a holiday rush. Oh my goodness, there are probably some people suffering from PTSD the moment I bring up the holiday rush. 
But think about it. A lot of people who are free and with relatives that might seek an activity to do with their families, preferably one that prevents arguments from breaking out among the family, well, movies will do. It's a little bit more difficult to argue in a crowded movie theater than at home over your dinner table, though many people have succeeded anyway. Besides, there's a lot of marketing you can put behind a Hollywood holiday film, and it's shored up by everything around it. If only because there's so much out there marketing the holidays already. You've got people marketing Christmas wrapping, Christmas presents, Christmas decorations, Christmas music. There's already that disturbance in the capitalist force that is calling to people. So why not take advantage of that impetus? It's already on people's minds. And when a lot of Christmas stuff gets pushed forward, you can probably make some sort of deal or argument for putting your stuff forward as well. Why not? Potentially available audiences, a pre-made marketing solution, and hey, these holidays tend to show up at the same time every year unless there's some sort of magic happening. This sounds like a good deal for someone trying to make a buck. So you see an array of many holiday themed works in multiple genres and in many different forms. Look, here is the Christmas family play of the week that all of the children can come and act in and read their lines like they're stone bored because they don't know how to act. Oh look, here are the Hallmark movies that are Christmas themed. Here is the usual Christmas comedy where someone either A, becomes Santa, B, already is Santa, or C, doesn't know they're Santa and they have amnesia and they've got to figure it out. Okay, I've never seen that last one, but I'm sure it's happened. Many series have their Christmas specials or Christmas themed episodes to take advantage of this as well. Naturally, horror would jump on this train, but Horror opens up some different avenues that I'd like to talk about on the creative front. Not all horror works that are holiday themed or happen on the holidays are just marketing schemes designed to attract a ready-made audience. Sometimes the holiday fits very well with the story in and of itself. For one thing, the holidays provide a reason for a cast of characters to be drawn together. You've seen many different reasons pop up in many works for why characters are all in the same place at the same time. Maybe a loved one has died and a lot of old friends meet up at a funeral, or there's a wedding, or they get mysterious envelopes that invite them to a house that somehow gets cut off from the rest of the outside world. When a storm comes by, a holiday seems pretty normal. Normal, and a lot of people are not going to be expecting some sort of nastiness to go down when they get together. Well, beyond the normal nastiness that could happen if your family isn't the cuddly sort. And the holidays tend to bring with them a decent amount of drama. People might find themselves reunited after years apart, or find themselves looking at where they stand in life. They're are not an uncommon amount of real-life instances where people have used the holidays as kind of a benchmark. It's why the New Year's resolution is a thing. So many major realizations, interpersonal conflicts, and misunderstandings could take place. This can provide fodder for character conflict up to, say, revenge stories. Maybe not everyone is feeling so forgiving when Easter rolls around, straps on a bunny costume that is possessed by a demon, and decides to eat the souls of all of the children to teach the others a lesson. Holidays also have a mythology constructed around them, a set of stories that give them meaning, and these stories often have built within them a sort of morality tale. I mean, come on, even think about the commercial version of Christmas in the United States. Santa's coming to town and he's basing his decisions on who gets the good stuff based on who's naughty and nice. This is a basic morality tale. Horror works along morality tales too. So it's not that big of a jump to employ similar themes. Heck, using that Easter example, maybe we could get rid of the bunny and go with a man who has just experienced a breakdown in his life that he has interpreted as a religious rebirth that leads him to make some terrible choices. Mixed with a little dash of delusion, including seeing a twisted parallel between his own life and the resurrection of Christ. And he goes on a religious-themed killing spree attempting to kill people in accordance with how he sees that they have violated the law of God. 
Okay, that could be something. Or we could have a demon returning to the world in a terrible mimicry of the resurrection that requires a certain set of sacrifices in order to come again, also set on Easter as a sort of thumbing your nose. At the big man upstairs. I mean, demon. I'm giving us these basic bitch plot lines to try and give you an idea of how these sorts of things could logically fit together with the story. There is a set understanding of what a holiday is about, and these myths can be toyed with. There's also often a dark side to a lot of holidays, from the commodification of Christmas to the, hey, Thanksgiving may have a, <laughs> a vicious part of the story that can get left out, like, oh, what happens afterwards? Probably goes double for Columbus Day there, depending on who you are. I mean, even Labor Day exists because of horrible atrocities that happened in the American labor market, particularly to children. So, hmm, maybe we should play with that if we wanted to do a Labor Day horror movie. The story of the crucifixions also got, you know, kind of a downer part of the story that's rather violent. I mean, he gets nailed on the cross and dies. I mean, there's a, there's a happy part that comes afterward, but there's still a dark side too. And even before the Mafia messed with it, uh, Valentine's Day kind of has a bit of a brutal history too. St. Valentine, he, uh, he didn't end very well. The dark side of holidays, the kind that aren't exactly postcard friendly, can make for a wonderful tool for the horror author that really wants to unsettle people. And this juxtaposes so well with the normal comfort and wholesomeness people would like to associate with the holidays. You could also argue there is an intrinsic modern suspicion of anything that seems wholesome and traditional, at least in certain circles. Tack on to that, that many people are generally unhappy around the holidays. You have seasonal depression and people who aren't in a good place with their family or don't have anyone to spend time with over the holidays. I mean, any first responder could probably tell you that there are a lot of calls that come in on the holidays, many of them relating to suicides. So the idea that holidays aren't all they are cracked up to be and that there is something dark in them is all too normal for us. This is also something we covered in our discussion of horror within the ordinary. It's inside the things that we're already familiar with that sometimes we can find the tools to making people the most uncomfortable. Tack on to that that many of the modern holidays that are recognized in much of the rest of the world also may have roots in older, often local or pagan traditions that may also surprise or unsettle a modern audience. These things, too, could be useful. There's an episode of Supernatural that makes use of pagan deities of the winter solstice, who have found their traditions usurped by the more modern commercial Christmas. And they are still eating people while bemoaning the loss of the good old days when people used to sacrifice to them. Yule is an example of a real-life tradition that predates Christmas that is now associated with Christmas by dint of being a part of the winter holidays. And if you look up a lot of information on Yule, or Yule time, you see it get associated with the Wild Hunt. And the Wild Hunt itself involved both the living and the dead. And this was a time when many mythological beings, including Asgardians and the undead, could interact with people. As with many old traditions that underwent change after Christianization of said peoples, elements have remained as a part of a cultural legacy. There's so much ammunition here for a creative or greedy mind that there's little wonder there's still room for even more holiday movies. Particularly the violent, scary, uncomfortable, or gory kind. Then, of course, there is the awfully awesome opportunity for So Bad It's Good Horror. I'm reminded of the old uh, Jack Frost movies about a killer snowman that's actually a, a serial killer who was melted down into the snow and now he's back for vengeance. Oh, those movies were so bad. I mean, in one, I think he was allergic to bananas because the hero was allergic to bananas and they'd... He'd taken in his DNA and they have to use bananas to kill him. It's, it's so dumb. But 
it's so much fun and holiday horror movies in particular can lend themselves to this because of their trappings it is a thin line between terror and the utterly ridiculousness especially since humor is often used as a tool to help us deal with the awful because of this there are so many classic horror comedies that are holiday themed that you, you You've got to see the market, particularly for a studio that doesn't want to put in all that much money. And whether you want the work to be comedic with horror elements or outright horror, you still have access to pre-made and pre-understood gimmicks that people are already going to have some sort of understanding of. You don't have to set all of it up. We already know the candy canes. For for the most part, most of us know that candy canes are a part of Christmas, so you don't have to explain why those things are there. You don't have to explain why there is this whole holiday with a man who wears a red suit and goes ho 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 and he goes from chimney to chimney. It's already pre-established. And these can also provide many of your creatures, monsters, killers, or psychopaths with a recognizable and memorable gimmick. Of course, this can work for and against you. Because there's baggage here, and audiences often share different interpretations of how such baggage may be used or relate to them, you're, you're taking some very serious risks. These holiday movies often have a theme relating to the holiday itself. You can see this uh, within the recent Black Friday movie with Bruce Campbell and Michael J. White, which has monsters that are consuming on a day that's all about shopping and consumption. And they build this mega monster that is also doing terrible things. You know, climactic final battle and all that. Krampus is about family and the Christmas spirit, just in a really twisted way. Common motifs and elements from the tradition also tend to make it into these movies, like in Halloween with all of its pumpkin imagery and the fact the kids are already saying, hey, the boogeyman comes out on Halloween, this is when the monsters come. Well, in this case, a literal one does show up. And this sort of thing is not limited to just movies. I bring up movies a lot on this channel because I tend to find that movies are where a lot of people have interacted with horror. So when I mention these horror works, people go, oh, I know that one. Now, with horror video games becoming so popular, I often get to use these in some of my discussions, and I kind of want to go into more of what horror video games can offer, because it's opened up whole new avenues that are so much fun. That's certainly something I want to look more into in the future. But yes, there are holiday-themed horror video games, or even holiday-themed levels within video games. There is a Christmas level in the old arcade game, Carnival, where you're in there fighting evil Santa's elves, and I think a, a ghoul Santa. It was a lot of fun. And like a lot of holiday horror movies, a lot of the holiday horror games tend to err on the side of the, oh, look how silly this is and how over the top this is, rather than playing it purely for the fear factor. Evil Santa Clauses are often a staple of these. Because of how widespread Christmas is, it's very often one of the most obvious subjects for our holiday horror movie. Thanksgiving also tends to fall into that boat. Halloween, because of its subject matter and traditions, another obvious one. But consider also that national and local holidays could also be the subject of some horror, especially if many of these cases mark some important action, figure, or controversy that could provide the framework for a horror story. Arguably, The Wicker Man is one of these movies, as is Midsommar. A fictitious holiday or tradition can allow you to tell very much the same story of a holiday horror movie with your own rules. And we consider some very dark traditions, it's not very hard to go full on Shirley Jackson's The Lottery with it if you want to. Arguably one of the most famous short stories that covers this sort of thing. 
And like I mentioned earlier, horror elements, or things that we normally associate with horror stories, can appear in other holiday tales that are not specifically part of the horror genre. One of the most famous is A Christmas Carol. And these works tend to blend more into their own genre in much the same way as Where the Wild Things Are is a kid's story, not a horror story, even though there are some rather horrific elements if you start to take a look at it too deeply. Things that we traditionally associate with horror stories can often uproot themselves and make a new home in another story, one with more wholesome intentions or form. The reverse, as we've talked about, is also clearly true, when something wholesome becomes corrupted and tainted so that we can make you uncomfortable with it and bring you the spookies, and I tend to think there's always room for the spookies. But on that note, I'm going to wish you well and say class dismissed.